up guys another day with me i'm finally back in my yard and i um, just wanted to show you the i guess the truck i don't know i need to replace the fifth wheel because this one has seen better days thing is i can't get any parts don't know why it's a mystery okay I am installing this piece this is from this is from diesel freak it's the company so what this is basically there's a resistor here between the it's going to the fuel there we go. fuel temperature sensor and uh, just plug it in, hold on. It's not easy to do this single-handed. And the second piece is it plugs between the boost pressure. I mean the boost pressure sensor. And what you got is basically this little switch. You run your switch anywhere, anywhere you know inside the cab can you put it here or whatever you want to do it it's got 10 positions you just adjust it the way you want zero if you leave it at zero that's basically stuck not, net, nothing changes you turn up to 10 and I don't know you'll give it some extra boost that's that's what it is basically you know just extra boost and um, so yeah this goes to the boost sensor just plugs in between the harness and the sensor and then you run your wires inside the cap I'm gonna put them in a wire loom I just got this uh, it's quarter inch it's perfect for uh, for two wires sometimes three so yeah I'm gonna you know measure what I need I'm gonna put it in a wire loom make it look all pretty and then I'll find a spot where I want to drill and just put the adjusting switch or whatever you want to call this. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Alright, so I cut the length that I needed. I stopped the wire loom up to about here because it's gonna go inside. So it's tucked in there. I'm gonna put some zip ties, make it all clean up a little bit. So then, if you know, there's like extra ports and holes, you know, if you need to run any accessories. So basically, you pull those, pull those out. You nip them at the end, and you just run your wires and that's your uh, basically your o-ring so let's see what's inside behind that so i took this apart and basically what you're going to be looking for is right here there's two more okay there's one i pull the second one all right I got a second out, so I'm gonna run my wires. Then I'm gonna put this on the inside. Put out camera right here. Put on the new wires, run it, whatever I need to run them, and close it up. Okay, I ran the wires, put it all back together, put the fuse back, back on the place, put a zip tie for now. I'm gonna cut the end, and then I'm gonna put a couple more over here inside I ran it I plugged it with the with the little all these little things what are you gonna call it I know the I didn't do it the right way the right way is to remove both 
put new pins run the wires into the pins and then you know when you want to disconnect it you can just unplug the whole thing but I don't have pins right now so I just run it directly and there it is I'm just gonna run it inside there yeah you can see I'm gonna run this wires somewhere inside there I'm gonna bring them over here and that's where I'm gonna put the switch this one All right, so I'm making a hole to run this right here. So I'm gonna have the switch on the bottom like some guys do. They know who they are. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna put Put this inside the wire. So I'll run it. Okay, so on the bottom we have um oops. Was it an accident for the camera? Huh? Okay, so we have this little I've made the hole a little bit too big. That's okay. We don't care. There's o there's always JB Weld, so no worries. We'll make it happen. Well, you can always get the wrench and you know make it tight, but for me, hand tight is gonna just do fine. All right, it ain't going nowhere, that's for sure. And then, last step is oh, uh, never mind, we got it wrong, guys. I mean, I got it wrong. Not you. Alright, she's done. I like it. Let me make sure. Make sure it's all good. Alright. There you go, guys. Off. On. All right, let's go have some fun with this thing. All right, let's start it up. Uh oh. up a little bit it's been sitting for three days all right let's see what have I done or what I have done let's check it out
that's it pretty much. Um, that's what's the next eight. It's not all the way up, it's like an eight, I think. Oh, like it. We'll see how it's gonna be on the load. My guess is gonna be smoking a hell of a lot. Yeah, baby. I love it. Well, I got it all done. I took all pictures for the insurance. I showed them all the, all the cracks. Cracks in that area. Right here. There's cracks on both sides, on top. Right there where the joints are. At the bottom, the brackets are bent. And the number two is all bent. And there's a place that hold all together. They're all cracked. So um, I'm gonna send them and see what they say in a, in a few days, I guess. Hopefully, we'll get it all, all done and uh, send me the money over. So I can fix my truck. This thing is not cool, man. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There might not be a lot of cracks in, uh, or, uh, you know, or belts, but as you can notice, I got the hit from, I got hit from that side. And the whole thing flexed and lifted me off the ground. So imagine how um, how hard the hit was. I was saying there might not be body damage or like a lot of cracks, but all the posts are bent. And when I have loaded, uh, number one, it's loaded with some SUV. I would say, yeah, something heavier. This whole thing just leans to one side and pulls me off the road. Like it, it, it's not straight anymore. You can, you can drive it, and it's just not enjoyable. It's just always constantly pulling to the right, and the whole head rock just leans. So that's why it needs to be refabbed. It's the only reason that we're doing this. And yeah, like I said, there's cracks on top, right there. In that area where the cross members go between the between the posts, the actual posts on both sides, uh, the brackets that they go to the frame, they're bent. This whole thing is bent. So we'll keep you updated on that one.